There you go. Okay, so how will we do this? Will I wave at you every time I want to slide like this? Okay, fine. Um, well, Remus and Cesar said, well, first of all, thank you very much for having us here in Romania. It's really nice to be here. Um, it's, it reminds me slightly of, a, of an English bingo hall. I don't know whether you have a bingo in Romania. What, what's the Romanian for bingo? Bingo, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least. You can have that one for free. You see, they're laughing. They're laughing already. <laughs> Remus and Cesar said, be controversial, be controversial. We want something controversial. There are media cameras here from the national media. Um, and you talk about same sex marriage. But I think the problem for me is that there's, there's nothing really very controversial um, about same sex marriage. Um, so I tried uh, to give instead some sort of visual controversy that the media cameras would enjoy. Next slide, please. Um, the problem is I couldn't find any. I couldn't, this is not a real picture, by the way. I couldn't find any really controversial images, unfortunately. Next slide, please. So, in, and this is, this is slightly relevant uh, in a way um, to the theme of same sex marriage, but really it's just uh, for, the, for the controversy. Have you got that? <laughs> yes? Okay, then next slide, please. <laughs> this isn't really um, even directly relevant to the idea of same sex marriage, this is really just for a bit of fun. <laughs> These are adverts for ice cream, by the way. I'm not on commission for them, but it's nice ice cream. Have we had enough of that one? I can email these slides to anyone who wants them. Yeah? Okay, don't, don't worry. See me next time. Next slide, please. Same sex marriage. Well, I want to make a case for the legalization of same sex marriage or equal marriage. Um, as it's now called in many countries, and quite rightly, um, on two grounds. One, on the grounds that same-sex orientations, homosexuality, um, gay and lesbian uh, orientations, um, are something that should see both social and legal acceptance, not just toleration and acceptance, but also therefore equality before the law. That's the first ground. And on the second ground, that marriage is a civil right, and as a civil right or a civil matter, um, should be extended to all citizens without discrimination. And I'll start um, by talking um, about uh, the social, the case of social uh, and legal acceptance. And the first thing I want to say is that the old argument of unnaturalness is something uh, that has been refuted. I don't know what uh, the situation is like in Romania, um, but um, certainly in many countries of the world, uh, before the notion of uh, gay marriage has even uh, been raised, before the notion of legal equality for gay people has ever uh, been raised, um, the strong, visceral argument that comes against even the recognition of same-sex orientations is that they're not natural. There's something wrong about them on a fundamental and biological level. It's just not what um, those things are for. First thing I want to say is that um, the, the whole, that whole argument about what is and what isn't uh, natural um, has been uh, refuted uh, by observation. It is the case that all animals, um, including uh, human beings, um, display same-sex orientations they've been cataloged in almost every uh, species of animal. So even to say that this is something um, unnatural, something decadent, something wrong, something perverted, um, is objectively untrue, even if we look at uh, the rest of, of the animals in the world. But the second thing I want to say about the argument um, of unnaturalness um, is that in any case, whether it were or were not true that this is something that uh, we just get up to um, as a nature and all animals do as well, whether or not that were the case, the argument that something is natural is no argument that it is right, and the argument that something is unnatural um, is no argument that it is wrong. Clearly, all modern medicine is unnatural. 
in the sense that it interferes with what would otherwise be the ordinary course um, of your life. Um, but we don't say um, that modern medicine is an abomination. Mostly we don't, certainly not on the day that we need it. And the third way of refuting this argument of naturalness is to say that just in the same way that naturalness is no measure of rightness, so also should we not accept somehow that naturalness can be used as a simple proxy for describing what is normal. So that's often actually what people mean when they say so and so thing is natural. They mean that it's normal, it's what most people do. And the fact that these other people are doing something different is not normal, and therefore it's not natural. Again, um, just as naturalness is no uh, indicator of rightness, so too is it wrong for a majority, any majority, um, to use their own majority power to describe other people as somehow less human, uh, less natural than them. So the first thing I think that should lead us uh, towards social and legal acceptance um, of uh, same-sex orientations is this refutation of the argument against naturalness. Next slide, please. The second general principle um, that is a good general principle that most people um, agree with when it's applied to other things, um, but might have some difficulty agreeing with when it's applied to this topic, is the principle that we should um, generally, uh, and this is foundational to many human rights instruments today, that we should generally um, have a higher notion, a higher concept of human dignity and respect for human dignity than we have had in the past. What's uh, one of the greatest uh, motivating factors behind the adoption of human rights instruments. It's not just a very progressive, um, happy uh, feeling that we want to drive humanity forward. It's also, human rights are also built on the horror that we feel when we look back some of the terrible things um, that have been done by human beings in the past. And even as a, as a historical fact, great human rights instruments in the 20th century come after some of the worst atrocities that human beings have committed, of course. That general principle then that we should foster always um, a higher notion of, of human dignity in every area of our life, I think applies equally um, to same-sex orientations. You have greater respect for individuals' choices and freedom, less tolerance of poking into people's private lives in an invasive way. And I think that sexual orientation falls very neatly within this sort of area, this sort of area of things in which we are, you know, just not inclined to take an interest anymore. Or things we shouldn't be inclined to take an interest in anymore. So the refutation of the argument of unnaturalness, the assertion that sexual orientation falls into the category of things that we should not have regard to when thinking about um, whether a human being does or doesn't qualify um, for our respect. Next. And also, the rise of the liberal principle that individuals should have their own search for happiness and fulfilment respected and facilitated so long as they're not harming others. Now, in fact, um, many people who uh, oppose legal or social acceptance um, of same sex orientations say, well, actually, we do respect the liberal principle that individuals should be respected as long as they're not harming others, but we assert that this behaviour is harming others, that there is harm being done um, to, you know, uh, various people from these people's family outwards into society. This is an especially strong argument when the case of adopting children is brought, um, brought up. Um, but thankfully, there's never been a claim of harm that I've ever seen any evidence to support. And the ability to form fulfilling sexual relationships, start families, have your partnerships recognised, is clearly a great good for the people involved and doesn't in itself harm anyone. So, next time, on these grounds, civil rights of all sorts have been and ought to be extended to people with orientations towards other people of the same sex, and they should be. Okay, so that's um, as far as it goes for sexual orientation. Let's move on to marriage. Next slide, please. 
I think the important first thing to say about marriage is that in some cultures, obviously marriage is a social institution only, and the state is not at all involved. This is uh, far less the case today um, than it used to be in the past. Very often the state is involved, almost everywhere now in fact the state um, is involved in marriage. But there are some places where two people just come together, declare their intentions, and society looks on them um, as well. Next time. Where the state is involved, however, I think it's indisputable that this places the legal institution of marriage firmly as a civil matter. And that makes it something that these should be provided without discrimination. So that's the case for same-sex marriage, as far as I'm concerned, it's relatively uncontroversial. Let's look at a few of the arguments against. One of the arguments um, against is the argument that there should be no state involvement um, at all uh, in people's relationships. Why should the state be laying down the law for what is and what isn't um, an acceptable relationship between people? Now, I've got a certain amount of sympathy for this argument. Um, it's understandable in many ways. Uh, marriage as an institution for some people carries unacceptable connotations of patriarchy and property. Um, and they don't want to be um, involved in this institution themselves and they don't think it should be perpetuated and endorsed by the state as being the one better way um, of living um, than any other. So I have some sympathy um, with this general argument, but I think the logical conclusion of it um, as applied to same-sex marriage is that you either open it up to everyone who gives same-sex marriage or you abolish marriage. But it's no argument for having marriage uh, for some people and not for others. There are some people in the UK who actually um, face the possibility of same-sex marriage being legalised, have said that they would prefer that marriage were just abolished entirely um, in terms of uh, the state providing it, than have it opened up um, to same-sex couples. But I think that's quite an extreme position. Next slide. Another argument that's we've made against um, in our experience of the debate in the UK is that the state cannot redefine marriage. You'll instantly recognise this is more of an assertion than an argument, um, but it masquerades as an argument, um, at least in the debate in the UK. Really what people mean um, when they say this is that there is some essential universal definition of marriage which is above the state. That's their definition, obviously, and that happens to be the one that's universal and above the state. It's usually um, a religious argument. But the reply to it is relatively simple, and that is that reform of the civil rights of marriage um, leaves entirely untouched any other definition of a marriage. Mormons, Muslims, Catholics, whoever, um, Orthodox, and Romanian, um, can, can have their own definitions um, of marriage, um, no one's going to try and take those away from them, um, but where it is a civil matter, clearly the state can redefine marriage, as it has many times in the past in many countries. Next slide. And the third argument that's often made against equal marriage is that equal marriage is unnecessary because we can provide the same thing to same-sex couples um, in another way. We can provide some alternative mechanism, some civil unions or some civil registration, some sort of uh, pact um, between same-sex couples witnessed by the state that gives the same legal protections. Um, but the refutation, I don't think any serious argument for civil rights, which is what I'm arguing this is, can ever accept a separate but equal apartheid type uh, approach um, to any sort of uh, civil rights. Well, for us, of course, uh, I'm guessing marriage um, is about love, it's about a relationship, it's about solidarity between two people, it's about social recognition for that fact, it's about making a life together. But for many of the opponents of same-sex marriage, this is really not about any of that, it's really just all about sex. Next slide, please, it's not a picture of your <laughs> 
sex. This is what it's that again and again and again. This is all really that religious people are thinking about when they uh, think about same-sex couples. Gay sex, gay sex, gay sex. They can't get that done. And, <laughs> and their problem really um, is that uh, the question uh, in their heads is what is the point of sex? The point of sex is for reproduction. As Sonia alluded to earlier. Now, of course, um, that is part of the story. Clearly, we are animals. Clearly, we have reproductive functions um, which are necessary for the production of children, for the, the, the production of the next uh, generation. But this is a very narrow, and dry, and unimaginative idea. Um, of what sex really is. And I think it's, in a large part, a denial of what it means to be human. Yes, sex, and the point of sex in the pure biological terms um, is the reproduction of children. In the same way, in pure biological terms, the point of food is to keep you alive. But, next slide please, we make it colourful and exuberant. We enjoy it. Next slide, please. We present it in interesting and new ways. Next slide, please. We put a cherry on top of it. That's more of an English speaker's joke. And actually, I think that's a strawberry. No, it's a cherry. Thank you. In exactly the same way, um, clothes, clothing, is to keep you safe from the elements. It's to keep, exactly, it's to keep um, the sun off you and the rain off you. That's what it's for, um, in those simple, reduced terms. And yet, next slide, please. We make it exuberant, we play with it, we do things with it that are interesting, we give it a meaning simply beyond um, covering uh, yourself up from the sun. And people wear all sorts of weird and wonderful, next slide, please, exotic things. They bling themselves up, they wear gold and jewels, and they may look to us extremely ridiculous. Next slide, please. But nonetheless... <laughs> it's just part of the natural exuberance of being human. And just in the same way, um, the food is for nutrition, but we make it more interesting. Um, the clothes are keeping us warm and dry, but we have fun with it. Yes, maybe sex is good. <laughs> Uh, reproduction, and um, that's not the end of the story. <laughs> One of the most important things about a, a humanist approach to life um, is, I think, this recognition, this recognition that we are here, um, clearly we are a product of natural forces, part of the natural world, we are animals, um, like other animals, but there is something more to us uh, than that. Um, we give meaning to our experiences, we create ourselves and societies to a large extent create societies around us. I think it's extremely important. I think it's important for us to recognise that. And when we're having important discussions about the best way to live, the best way to uh, respect the rights of others, the sort of relationships that we want to endorse, I think we should bear that in mind. I don't think there's any argument um, for denying any human being um, in a situation of consent and freedom and love the right to make their own relationship and to have that relationship recognised by the society in which they live. I hope that the day will come when we'll see that recognised all over the world. I hope slightly sooner that day will come in Romania. And thank you very much.